Hello there, this is Rahul and in today's session we are gonna talk about Terraform state locking using DynamoDB on AWS. Before we jump into the demo, let's try to understand what is Terraform state locking is. Let's consider a scenario, you are a team of a developer working on a Terraform project. So whenever you work on a Terraform project and you execute Terraform plan or Terraform apply command, then you generate a Terraform state. As I mentioned, you are a team of a developer working on a same Terraform project. So if there are more than one developer working on a Terraform project, then you should have a same copy of a Terraform state. And to achieve that, what you do, you store a Terraform state file on a remote location. And if you are working with a AWS, then you use a S3 as your remote location for storing your Terraform state file. But when you have stored the Terraform state file remotely and there are more than one developer working to update the same Terraform state file, then you should have a kind of a locking mechanism. And to implement the locking mechanism, we are going to use the DynamoDB available onto AWS along with the S3 bucket, which is storing our Terraform remote state. We are going to simulate this scenario by creating two projects that is called as project one and project two that you are going to see into the demo. So in the project one developer one will try to apply his configuration using a Terraform remote state file and in project two developer two will also try to implement his Terraform configuration using the same remote state and we will try to execute both the uh, Terraform apply command at the same time and we'll try to see how the locking mechanism. So let's head over to the desktop and see the demo. To start with the demo, I have created a couple of projects for Terraform state locking because I want to simulate the scenario of a locking. So here on my Visual Studio on the left hand side, you will see a couple of projects. So project one and project two. And in both the projects, you will find main.terraform file uh, along with the variables.tf. Let's open the main.tf file of our project one. And this is the main.tf of our project one. And similarly, there is a main.tf present in the project two also. Both are similar file, but I'll explain what are the component and what are the resource uh, block which are common in both the files. So to start with the main.tf file, so here, first of all, this is a provider section. So here we are using AWS. That's why you are, we are using the provider as a AWS. So here I have mentioned the reason along with the access key and the secret key. So both are defined into the variables.tf. So if you open variables.tf, then you will find the access key and the secret key. Moving further, uh, this is an uh, EC2 example. So we are trying to start an EC2 instance using this Terraform file. So this is just a very basic example. That's why I have taken a t2.micro. So this is the resource for uh, provisioning an EC2 machine. Okay, so till now it is very simple Terraform file where we are just using the provider and starting an EC2 machine. But moving further, whenever we are working with the uh, Terraform state and whenever we are talking about the locking, then we need to store the Terraform state file remotely. And for that, we are going to use the AWS S3 bucket. So this is the uh, block for uh, defining a remote Terraform state file. So this is the S3 bucket uh, resource we are going to use over here. And here you will find the bucket name. So the bucket name I have used over here is Terraform S3 bucket. So this is the bucket which we are going to create. Secondly, we need to define the path or the key where we are going to store that Terraform state file inside our S3 bucket. So this is the location which we called it as a key. Uh, at this location, we are going to store this Terraform state file. And this is going to be stored on an AWS S3 bucket. So this is a remote location. Second, we need to define the region. And along with that, we also need to define the uh, DynamoDB table. This is an important concept when we talk about the Terraform state locking. So we need to create a table uh, inside our DynamoDB and DynamoDB is provided by AWS. So this is the name of our table and inside that table, we are going to use a lock ID. So that also we are going to see so we are going to create a remote, uh, not remote, but we are going to first create an S3 bucket. And after that, we are also going to create a DynamoDB table along with the lock ID. Now we know the prerequisites of our this demo. So first of all, we are going to create an S3 bucket. So copy the name of this bucket from here. This is an user defined name. So you can keep any name of your choice. Uh, after copying the name, just switch back to your AWS console. This is my AWS management console. Uh, in the search type is search bar type S3. Click on S3 and here click on create bucket. 
paste the name of the bucket and then simply create bucket. And here you can see our S3 bucket has been created. After creating the S3 bucket, the next thing which we need to do, we need to create a DynamoDB table. So copy the name of this DynamoDB table. And again, this table name is user defined. You can keep any name of your choice for your DynamoDB table. After copying the name, again, switch back to AWS console. In the search bar, type Dynamo. Click on DynamoDB. And here on the left hand side, click on the tables. Click on create table. Uh, enter the name of the table and here we need to mention the uh, key ID or the partition key ID and you have to strictly put the name lock ID otherwise you won't be able to use the feature of a Terraform state lock ID so you always have to remember the key should be lock ID okay after assigning the key just simply create table and it will take some couple of seconds or maybe more to create the table all right, so now our table has been created and it's active now. Before we move forward, I would like to show you the main.tf file of our second project. So this is the main.tf of my second project. And here again, it's a pretty similar file. Here we have used the AWS provider. Here we are trying to again start an EC2 instance. And here we have defined the remote state file uh, using the backend S3 bucket. So here, if you look carefully, we are using the same bucket, which we have just created. We are also referring to the same Terraform state file, which we are referring into the project one main.tf file. And here again, we are using the same DynamoDB uh, table. So what that mean? It, it means like we are using two projects or assume that as a two developers are working and both are working on a separate Terraform projects and they are referring to the same bucket and uh, same key. And if you compare over here, then you will also find the same details over here. So this is the bucket detail and the Terraform state file and also the Dynamo DB state or sorry, Dynamo DB table. Now what we are going to do, we are just going to open the terminal and in the terminal, we are going to open both the project. So here I have already opened the terminal. And if you check the path over here, so on the left hand side, you will find a path of my project one. Okay. And on the right hand side, you will find the path of my project so we are going to run both the terraform init apply sorry terraform init plan and apply command one by one and we are going to simulate the locking scenario over here so start with the project one the first command which i'm going to run over here is terraform init command okay after the terraform init command had just finished i'm just going to run the next command that is terraform plan command Okay, so it says it's going to create or add one resource. So yes, we want to create an EC2 machine. That's why it's saying it is going to add one resource. I'm just going to clear the screen over here. And the next command which I'm going to run is Terraform apply. And it is going to ask like, do you want to perform this action? So we are going to take a pause over here and if you think about that scenario where a couple of developers are working at the same time to update the terraform state file so assume that this on the left hand side in the project one he's a developer one and he's trying to apply the terraform configuration and he's on his way but he has not applied it completely so at the same time developer two who is sitting on the right hand side of this terminal is also working on the same project uh, using not same project but still using the same terraform state file so what he does it it's like he also issues the command terraform in it and after that he issues the command terraform plan I'll, first of all, I'll clear the screen. And remember, our developer one is still in the process of updating the Terraform state file because he has not uh, finished his provisioning of EC2 machine or he has not started the EC2 machine on AWS. So as you can see, you got the error error acquiring the state log. That means the developer who is sitting on the left hand side of my terminal has already put a lock on the Terraform state file and he has not finished with his work. 
So if any developer who is trying to access the same state file will give, will be thrown an error and this error will say error acquiring the state log. That means there is already a log present by some other developer. So in the meantime, you cannot use or update the Terraform state file. Let's switch over to our AWS management console and verify the log. So just to open the browser and here this is my AWS management console and if you look for DynamoDB click on it and on the left hand side click on tables now we are going to verify the lock ID so click on the table which we have created and here uh, if you look for the option item summary so click on view items and here you can see this is the lock ID uh, key which we have created at the time of our dynamo db table creation and if you click on this this is the lock id which is present right now so this is the lock id which is available right now so this is the terraform state file which a developer one or the project one is using and it has already put a lock that's why developer two or the project two is not able to execute the terraform plan or terraform apply command so this is how you can verify the lock ID which we have implemented so that developer one can finish their work. All right, now we know the lock ID is present. So what we will do, we will just finish the work which has initiated by our developer one inside our project one. So we will switch back to our console and what we'll do, we will simply type, yes, I wanna apply the configuration. All right, so now developer one has finished its work and he has successfully provisioned an EC2 machine. So that means his lock has been removed. So we will go back to our AWS management console and just refresh this page once again, because this was the lock ID which previously developer one has put. So I'll refresh the page. And I'll again click on over here and here you can see uh, the long detail of our key ID or the lock ID has gone. And we can verify by verifying the EC2 instance which he has started. So click on EC2, click over here. And instance is running. Okay, so as you can see this is initializing. So this is the latest instance which I have started. I was previously working so that's why I have provision a previous uh, an old instance but this is the instance which we have started right now so that means our developer one is able to provision an ec2 machine and his log has been removed from our terraform state file okay so to complete the whole scenario what we will do we'll uh, update or we will just uh, run the remaining commands of developer2. So here you can see previously the developer2 has encountered an issue where he had faced a log because developer1 was still working but now developer1 has finished all of his work so there should not be any kind of a locking on a terraform state file. But uh, just to avoid the confusion what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna update the tag name over here. So what I'll do I'll just put developer2. Okay, so I'll switch back over here and uh, I hope I have saved it. Yeah, I have saved it. So I'll run the command terraform plan once again. All right, so now if you look carefully when i issued the terraform plan command when developer one was still on the way or he was still working on his project uh, we got the issue terraform straight lock but after developer one has finished his work when i issued the terraform plan command then it has successfully uh, executed now what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna clear the screen and i'm just gonna apply the changes terraform apply type yes all right so now developer 2 also applied his changes let's switch back to our aws management console over here and again click on ec2 close this pop-up and here you can see 
now this was the previous ec2 instance which is started by developer one and this is the uh, uh, ec2 instance which is started by developer two i had that old uh, ec2 instance which i have deleted in between but uh, just to make the difference that's why i have added a tag over here so that we can identify the instances so now you can see like uh, how the log file will help you to avoid the conflict or to put a terraform state in an inconsistent uh, order so with the help of locking uh, what you can do you can uh, uh, put a sequence or you put a proper instructions so that developer one can finish his work and after that developer two can start work on uh, his project and he can update the same terraform state file along with the today's demo i'm just going to share this guide which i have published on my blog so it contains all the example which we have seen in the today's uh, demo so just feel free to use this guide and along with that i'm also going to share my github repository where i have created this project so all this code will be available onto the github project so please find the link of this github repository into the description section and if you are coming it for the first time then i have previously uploaded the similar sessions on kubernetes terraform and helm chart so you can go through those playlists and if you want to learn more about those technologies then you can learn from those playlists and i also keep on uploading the similar content on weekly basis so just please feel free to go through this channel and consider subscribing if you really want to learn on the similar technologies so see you into the next session. Till then, take care and bye-bye.